In this age of information overload, where the line between fact and fiction blurs, we find ourselves lost in this bewildering maze of narratives. The guardians of truth have become architects of distortion, and the very essence of journalism has been hijacked. So you've been betrayed by the people who lead you, and that's why things are so volatile. What you're looking at is a crisis of our institutions. Our institutions are corrupt. Some of them are collapsing. We say that a lot because it's true, but we should be more precise. Not all of our institutions are the same. Some of them are bad, some of them are awful. But looming above the rest is the worst of all, and that's the news media. They're the most corrupt. The media are more crooked than Jimmy Hoffa ever was. They're more dishonest than your average bribe-taking building inspector in Queens. They make cops in Tijuana look trustworthy. You'll get a fairer treatment from an inner city DMV than you would from CNN. Ask Nick Sandman, we could go on. Words can barely express the truth of it. Once the press stood tall as the fourth pillar of democracy, a beacon of hope in the darkest corners of the world. But now, that pillar is crumbling under the weight of corporate greed, political bias, and the insatiable hunger for ratings. We reminisce about a time when journalists dared to challenge authority, when integrity and honesty were the backbone of every news story. But today, we find ourselves in a landscape where sensationalism reigns supreme, and the truth is a rare commodity. Watching the news on television makes you question the system itself. In what version of, quote, meritocracy could someone like Chuck Todd get rich and famous? Dumb and conventional now passes impressive? It's insulting. But rather than be insulted, we've decided to pause for a moment and look at it a different way. Yes, the news media are profoundly dishonest. All of us lie from time to time. That's the human condition. But imagine if lying was your job. Imagine forcing yourself to tell lies all day about everything in ways that were so transparent and so outlandish that there is no way the people listening to you could possibly believe anything you said. Then imagine doing that again and again and again every day of your professional life for your entire life. Could you do that? But if you're a non-sociopathic normal person, the answer obviously is no, you could not do that. You could never lie like that. So you've got to kind of respect the people who can. They're like Olympians in reverse. They achieve feats so dishonorable that you gasp in horror as you watch them. But at the same time, you've got to respect those skills. The thing about journalism is it's not an individual achievement. It's about the group. In journalism, it's the collective spirit that matters. Like synchronized swimmers or certain species of insects, journalists move together in concert as a herd, if you will. When Joe Biden writes a talking point, they repeat it, not just a few of them, but all of them in precisely the same way. The cacophony of talking heads has replaced thoughtful discourse, and the quest for clicks has surpassed the pursuit of truth. We witness pundits shouting over each other, drowning out reason, leaving viewers more confused than enlightened. Behind the scenes, puppeteers pull the strings, shaping narratives to serve their vested interests. The noble profession of journalism has been infiltrated, its very core corrupted by the influence of money and power. In the age of social media, misinformation spreads like wildfire, blurring the lines between reality and fantasy. Deepfakes theories flood our screens, leaving us questioning the very essence of truth. But all is not lost. In this tangled web, a glimmer of hope remains. We, the discerning viewers, have the power to demand change. We can reclaim our right to unbiased information, champion integrity, and resurrect the true spirit of journalism.